Football is officially back. Our Chicago Bears will be taking on the Tennessee Titans at home this Sunday at 12 p.m. Central. Can Caleb Williams get a dub in his NFL debut? Watch this video to hear my thoughts. What's going on, guys? I'm back with another Chicago Bears prediction video, which I'll be doing before every single Bears game this year. I'll also be having a post-game reaction after every single Bears game this year so subscribe to my channel if you guys want my thoughts before and after each game and i've been waiting to make this video for such a long time it's been a very eventful offseason for the bears but also a very long offseason with the whole offseason drama we had going on between you know caleb supporters and field supporters which we finally put to rest okay i'm thankful that we don't have to fight over the quarterback anymore and we can all come together behind our new quarterback Caleb Williams and not have to look at a different quarterback in the draft okay Caleb is our quarterback now and hopefully for a long long time and I've been waiting to you know talk about the first Bears game for you know many months now at this point so I'm so so happy to be back making these videos for you guys NFL season starting is my favorite time of year September honestly has become my favorite month of the year because of football starting and because usually in September I still have hope for the Bears usually by November December I've lost all hope for the Bears with how many games we have lost but I am praying that things can be different this time around with the fantastic roster that Ryan Poles has built us over the past couple seasons so very exciting time to be a Bears fan the vibes feel so similar to 2018 where before that season I really felt like the Bears were going to have a great season and we did have a great season okay we won 12 games we went to the playoffs unfortunately lost the first round but we made a lot of memories that year. I think it's going to be something similar this year. But hopefully with the playoff win this time, but even making the playoffs with a rookie quarterback would be pretty fantastic in its own right. But this first game against the Titans is going to be very important for the Bears to win. Okay, they have to get out here and start on the right foot. Unlike last year, we're in the home opener. We got blown out by the Packers as usual. And... All hope for the season basically got destroyed. I know it's only one game and the results of one game never determine your entire season. But starting out on the right foot is always important, especially in a season like this one where our schedule becomes a lot tougher as the season progresses. Okay, obviously week two, we have the Texans, which is a very tough game. But most of our tough games are going to be after week seven, week eight. And we play the whole division in the second half of the season. So it's going to be very important for the Bears to rack up these wins at the beginning of the season against winnable opponents if they do want to have a chance to make the playoffs. They cannot start out 0-1 and potentially 0-2 because next week against the Texans is going to be even more difficult. So big game for Matt Eberflus to prove he is the coach of the future for the Chicago Bears. He cannot have another three win or seven win season. You have to make the playoffs and win nine plus games this year. So winning games like this in which you have probably more more of a chance to win okay the odds are in the Bears favor according to Vegas you know you have to go out here and win these games at home so big game for Matt Eberflus big game for Caleb Williams too making his debut in the NFL it's going to be so exciting to see what this guy actually has one of the most hyped up prospects in the draft I can remember in quite some time we'll see what this dude has and hopefully he can be the savior of the Chicago Bears franchise when it relates to the quarterback spot the Bears have not had a good quarterback in my entire lifetime I'm 20 25 years old so I'm praying praying and praying that Caleb Williams is going to be the one but talking about the Tennessee Titans guys they are not going to be a pushover this is not going to be a very easy game for the Bears to win they're going to have to go out here and play well in order to beat the Titans because the Titans have a vastly improved roster as compared to last year when they only won what was it five or six games or so right they improved a lot on both sides of the football with veteran acquisitions they fired their head coach Mike Vrabel which I was a big Mike Vrabel fan I can't believe he's still not employed anywhere in the NFL it's pretty crazy to me you know with what that guy did with some inferior rosters in the past I feel like they should have kept Mike Vrabel but they did you know hire a pretty good offensive mind in Brian Callahan so We'll see what Brian Callahan, the rookie head coach, has. But yeah, this team and general manager, Rand Carthen, had a pretty busy offseason. They added guys like LeJarius Sneed, like Calvin Ridley. They recently traded for Ernest Jones from the Rams, which is a robbery of a deal. Okay, I'm not sure why the Rams made that deal, but they got Ernest Jones for, I believe, like a late round pick swap in 2026. So that's going to be another, you know, key player to the uh, Titans front seven, which is going to be hard for the Bears offense to game plan for. So... 
Not going to be an easy game whatsoever. But talking more in detail about the Titans offense, first of all, I won't be talking about stats this early in the season because I don't want to talk about last season's stats when last season's stats do not really matter because it is a totally new roster, you know, for the most part. But talking about their additions, they added left tackle JC Latham in the NFL draft. They added running back Tony Pollard via free agency. Also via free agency, they got Lloyd Cushenberry center, Calvin Ridley receiver, receiver Tyler Boyd and obviously Brian Callahan I want to add him in this mix too because he is going to be the main offensive mind calling plays for this team so that's going to be a big you know philosophy change from last year for the Titans as well and in terms of the big departure on offense obviously it's going to be Derrick Henry okay the pride and soul of the Tennessee Titans for the past However many years he was there, he is officially gone. He is on the Baltimore Ravens. So that's going to be a big, big loss for the uh, Titans running back room, obviously. But yeah, talking about this team a little bit in detail, obviously they have second year quarterback Will Levis out of Kentucky. And I was not the biggest fan of Will Levis coming out. I mean, I think that where he got drafted was fair, though, with the potential that he had, you know, being a second round quarterback. So I think the Titans did get him at a good spot in the draft. Um, he was pretty raw coming out. He had to be coached up. And we saw some some of that raw upside last year um, when he took over his first game. He had like four touchdowns, which is a insane debut. Okay, good for him. He looked really good in that game, but was a little bit inconsistent going down the stretch last year. Last year, he had, you know, 1,808 passing yards in nine starts, along with eight touchdowns, four interceptions. In that time span, he's big, strong, athletic, has a gunslinger type of mentality. Kind of reminds me of Jay Cutler in some ways with the gunslinger type of arm that he has, which sometimes he can be a little bit reckless with. But, you know, maybe Brian Callahan can you know, do really good work with him as he has done with Joe Burrow with Cincinnati when he was there, you know, so that's Will Levis. I want to see like what, what changes there's going to be in him with a full NFL offseason with a lot of time working with this new coach, a coach in Brian Callahan that does really emphasize the passing attack as they did, you know, in Cincinnati, the Bengals pass the football at a very high rate and Brian Callahan kind of has the same mindset He's probably going to bring the same mindset over here to Tennessee. So we can expect a lot of throws being attempted, a lot of passes being attempted by Will Levis. And I want to see how accurate he can be with the football and what type of decision making he has in year two. But talking more about the passing attack, I do want to talk about their weapons because they added two big time weapons, especially one in Calvin Ridley, who they stole from their division rivals, the Jacksonville Jaguars. I'm sure that felt really good for Titans fans. But Calvin Ridley has been a little bit up and down. Like last year with the Jaguars, he did have over a thousand yards but there were a lot of times in the end zone, especially where Calvin Ridley suffered a big time drop. Okay, he cannot come down with some crucial catches at some important parts in those games. So Calvin Ridley still is a big, you know, upgrade over what they had at the receiver two spot. Last year, he's going to be on the other side of DeAndre Hopkins, who even D-Hop is a pretty good player at this point. Okay, last year he did have a thousand plus yards, even being a lot older, he can still come down with those crazy acrobatic grabs. But yeah, Calvin Ridley is going to be a big upgrade at the receiver number two spot in terms of route running, in terms of production, pass NFL production. And they also added Tyler Boyd from the Cincinnati Bengals as well. And Tyler Boyd has been one of the more underrated receivers in the NFL. He seems to always get 700 plus yards every single year. He's had multiple 1,000 plus yard seasons as well with the Cincinnati Bengals. So this is a guy that could, you know, make a big time play for the Titans at any point in this game. So definitely a big upgrade at the receiver number three spot for them as well. And obviously at the tight end spot, they do have Chig Okonkwo, um, who had 528 yards last year and does have a lot of potential still being relatively young. It does take a couple years for the tight ends to really break out. So maybe he can provide something too for this Titans passing attack. But Talking about the offensive line, that's probably my biggest worry right now with the Titans team. Last year, the O-line was very, very bad. Will Levis got sacked 28 times in only nine games that he started. So that's not good whatsoever. I know Titans fans complained a lot about the Titans offensive line. And they did address it in the NFL draft. They added J.C. Latham out of Alabama. But rookie tackles are rarely great right away, even highly drafted ones. And I don't think J.C. Latham is of the level of like a Pene Sewell or any of the top tackle prospects to come out like he wasn't of the level of a Joe Alt obviously so I'm a little bit worried about you know JC Latham potentially being a liability in this game especially to begin his career I think he could become a good tackle eventually but that is a massive question mark that I have I know they added Bill Callahan one of the best offensive line coaches in all of football and also Brian Callahan's dad to this coaching staff so 
his opinion definitely probably played a role in drafting him and obviously he knows a lot more about the offensive line than any of us do so if he thinks that JC Latham can be a good player then who am I to question him but I don't think it's going to be right away it's going to take a little bit of coaching so that could be a potential cause for concern for the Titans. The right tackle spot also could be a major spot of concern. They have two options there right now. Both of them have not really been that good. So that could be a key weakness. They have gotten a lot better on the interior. They added Peter Skaronsky last year, and they also added Lloyd Cushenberry, one of the best centers available this year. So the interior should be a little bit better, but still a little bit concerned about how this Titans O-line is going to fare this season which as a Bears fan is is a good thing okay I'm not concerned I'm happy that they have O-line concerns as a Bears fan but talking about the Titans defense then talking about their additions first of all so they added cornerback Legereus Sneed cornerback Chidobi Awuzie linebacker Ernest Jones defensive tackle Tivandre Sweat safety Quandre Diggs safety Jamal Adams if you look at the departures they lost defensive end Denico Autry and linebacker Aziz Al Shair and they have a new defensive coordinator here in Denard Wilson coming over from the Baltimore Ravens. He was their defensive backs coach there. And the DBs in Baltimore had a very good year last year. They've been good for quite some time. So, you know, he was very good at what he did there in Baltimore. But he's a rookie at calling plays, I believe. So it's hard to say what he's going to be like as a DC when we don't have any data points to actually judge any game film to watch but in Baltimore they had an attacking physical style of defense played a lot of press man obviously with Mike McDonald going over to the Seattle Seahawks you know he was a disciple in his system basically last year so if it's anything similar to the Ravens defense it's going to be a pretty tough defense to go up against they should be coached up pretty well especially the defensive backs and talking about the DBs they got a lot better there they upgraded heavily at the CB1 spot with Legereus Sneed coming over from the Chiefs and Legereus Sneed has played in so many playoff games so many big time moments for the Chiefs where he does have that high level experience and he's very very athletic very very physical very very scrappy very very good at what he does so whoever he's matched up against on this Bears receiving core that receiver is going to have a tough time going up against a guy like Legere Sneed they also added uh, Chidobi Awuzie who has had his moments also in the NFL he's not a superstar or anything but a good solid reliable corner at times during his NFL career so pretty decent one and two combination there they also added safeties in Quandre Diggs and Jamal Adams but Jamal Adams is a shell of himself I'm not really worried about him Quandre Diggs has been fairly reliable for the Seahawks he was okay last year so an upgrade but probably not a massive massive one but regardless being coached up by Denaro Wilson these guys probably are going to be a lot better than they were last season but where I'm really worried about this Titans defense is going to be their front seven because they have some big time playmakers on that front seven Jeffrey Simmons has been a beast during his entire NFL career he had 47 pressures last year is going to be a very very tough matchup on the inside we're definitely gonna to have to double team him they also added Tivandre Sweat via the NFL draft in round two I believe and he was picked by a lot of people to be a late round one pick but he had a DUI right before the NFL draft which is really stupid of him but in terms of like physical talent physical upside he is very very good okay he was a menace for Texas last year at certain points in that season so it kind of worries me that they have you know two big time monsters on the inside they also have you know, um, Ernest Jones at the linebacker spot who they just traded for. And Ernest Jones has been a blitzing machine for the LA Rams. Really good at getting pressures and quarterback hits. So all in all, it's a pretty good Titans front seven. The only thing that, you know, kind of gives me pause with this defense is that a lot of these pieces are brand new. When you have new pieces inserted into the secondary, a new defensive coordinator, some new guys in the front seven, sometimes it can take time to gel together. So maybe it's not going to be you know, a, a top level defense right away, but they certainly do have some very solid pieces. Now, before I talk about the Bears side, with NFL season being back, that means it's time to place your wagers for the NFL season as well for every single game, for the season long predictions that you have. And I think that my bookie is the best place to place those wagers. They're actually the sponsor of this video and they have a bunch of fantastic promotions going on this season. They have something called Risk Free Boosts where you can actually get a risk free bet on Thursdays and that basically means that if you place a wager, if your bet hits, congrats, you win some money. If it doesn't hit, you actually get your wager back in the form of a refund. So pretty cool to get those risk-free bets in. They also have other fantastic promotions going on. They're giving away thousands of dollars in prizes in their Super, Survivor, and Squares contest. So you have a chance to win some big-time money doing those contests as well. And if you use my promo code WINDYCITY while signing up, you actually get double your first deposit up to 2000 
dollars really cool promotion to take advantage of to get a big start to your bankroll i personally have a lot of fun wagering on the nfl i'll be wagering on random games too to make some random matchups a little bit more interesting so it's a fun way to pass the time watching a game that you may not be necessarily too interested in but obviously i'll be doing my bears bets as well and they also have something called my bookie plus where the more you play the more rewards that you get it's a loyalty program where you can unlock exclusive rewards giveaways promotions and a lot of other really cool things so bet on anything anywhere anytime and make the season a winning season using my bookie talking about our chicago bears next talking about the offense first of all so obviously we added quarterback caleb williams receiver keenan allen receiver roma dunze running back deandre swift tight end gerald everett and also offensive coordinator shane waldron in the offseason as for the departures we really only lost quarterback justin fields and receiver darnell mooney so a lot more additions than subtractions. I think it's definitely a much better offense here in Chicago this season, at least on paper. Last year, we were one of the worst offenses again in football. So only way to really go from that is up. And Caleb Williams is a massive X factor. He's one of the best quarterbacks to come out of the draft in quite some time. So the question is going to be how fast can he adjust to the speed of the NFL game? And can he adjust to the speed of the NFL game? Because I know some quarterbacks just never can make that adjustment. Some quarterbacks are only good at the college level, but I really do feel like Caleb is going to be one of those guys that's really good at the NFL level as well. But he is a rookie quarterback, and as with any rookie quarterback, he is bound to make some mistakes. I'm hoping that Bears fans are going to be patient with this dude, even though he's such a talented guy and we, we have such a stacked team around him now on the offense, I still want Bears fans to be patient with him because there are going to be certain moments, certain bad throws where Bears fans are going to question like, what the hell are you doing? But it's just one of those things where you got to see NFL defenses. You have to have reps against NFL defenses to actually become better as a quarterback. And so far, Caleb does not have those live reps against an NFL team in a game that actually matters. He got some preseason reps, obviously, but preseason reps are a lot different than regular season reps. So it's definitely going to be a bit of a learning curve, but I am you know, pretty confident that with the supporting cast we have around Caleb, we can work around his rookie limitations and still have a lot of success with him in his rookie year. Talking about the receivers, first of all, that we have on this team, we might have the best receiving core in the entire NFL. I know that Keenan Allen and Roma Dunsley have not really played a snap for the Bears just yet, so we have to see it to believe it. But Keenan Allen was one of the best receivers in all of football last year, as he has been during his entire NFL career. Roma Dunsley dominated college football last year, led the nation in contested catches, had a crazy amount of yards, like one of the best receivers to come out of the draft in the last couple of years as well, along with Malik Neighbors and Marvin Harrison Jr., obviously. But... We have those guys and also DJ Moore who had 1,300 plus yards last year and was just a monster the entire season making big time play after big time play racking up so many yards after the catch even working with multiple quarterbacks in OC that wasn't that good in my opinion. So the Bears receiving core is completely stacked but I want to see if it can translate in a game a game that actually matters okay how will Shane Waldron really get the ball into all these playmakers hands and can he get the ball into all these playmakers hands because that's going to be a pretty difficult task making sure everybody eats I know that Jackson Smith and the Jigba with the Seattle Seahawks last year was not happy with his role in that offense so Shane Waldron hopefully can scheme up Roma Dunze into opportunities where he can make big time impacts in his rookie year even with having two dominant receivers on the other sides of him so you know, Bears receivers definitely are very, very good. The running back room, I do want to see what happens with them, though, because I'm a little bit curious to see what the share percentage is going to be of snaps in this running back room. We have three pretty talented backs, in my opinion, in DeAndre Swift, uh, Roshan Johnson, and Khalil Herbert. Um, So I want to see if DeAndre Swift gets like 80% of the snaps, or is it going to be a shared backfield between him, Khalil Herbert? Is Roshan Johnson going to get in there? Like, what's going to be the the share in this Bears backfield. All these guys bring something a little bit different to the table. Obviously, DeAndre Swift is earning the most money and he has the best pass catching upside. So he should be on the field for the majority of the time. But I just want to see like if Roshan and Khalil Herbert also can get involved. But talking about the Bears defense next, talking about their additions first of all. So we added safety Kevin Byard, defensive end Austin Booker, and defensive end Daryl Taylor. As for departures, we lost safety Eddie Jackson and defensive tackle Justin Jones. So for the most part, the Bears defense stayed pretty much the same. It's mostly the same guys returning from last year. We did get an upgrade at the safety spot in Kevin Byard and Austin Booker could be an upgrade at the defensive end spot. He's still a rookie though, so we have to see it to believe it. But 
you know, the Bears defense did get a little bit better, in my opinion. And having another year of continuity is definitely going to help because this Bears defense was really freaking good down the stretch last year. They led the league in interceptions last year, even though most of their interceptions came in the second half of that season. So I want to see if that secondary can keep on turning the ball over. There's no reason to believe they can't do that because in the preseason, we got a lot of picks. Our defense played very well. Even our backups were going crazy with the turnovers. And I think Kevin Byard should be an upgrade over Eddie Jackson, which by the way, Kevin Byard was a former Tennessee Titan who got traded to the Eagles last year. So a bit of a revenge game for Kevin Byard potentially going back to the place where he started is his NFL career. But yeah, Kevin Byard against the run is a lot better than Eddie Jackson was. And in terms of coverage, I think he could be an upgrade over Eddie Jackson too because Eddie Jackson had lost a step the last couple of years, especially last year. It seemed like he did not really know what was going on sometimes back there in coverage. So hopefully Kevin Bard can be an upgrade. And we already got really talented cornerbacks, obviously, in Jalen Johnson, Tyreek Stevenson, you know, Kyler Gordon. I want to see how those guys do. And if Jaquan Brisker can have, you know, a bounce back year in year three after some up and down moments in year two. But talking about the Bears pass rush, that's going to be the big cause of concern for this defense. Um, That's the place where last year they really did lack. Now they did add Montez Sweat in the middle of that season and adding Montez Sweat changed the entire Chicago Bears defense because they finally got some semblance of a pass rush. But on the other side of Montez Sweat, who is going to step up? Is it going to be Austin Booker, the rookie? Is it going to be uh, Demarcus Walker, the veteran? Is it going to be Daryl Tater, who we traded for? Dominique Robinson somehow. It's, it's definitely not going to be Dominique Robinson, okay? I have no hope in that happening, but hopefully somebody else can step up on the other side of Montez Sweat. And obviously, Jervon Dexter's development is going to be a key thing to watch in this game as well. Let me go to my three keys to Bears victory now. How can the Chicago Bears win this game at home? And key number one is going to be to get the rookie nerves out of Caleb Williams. I don't care what Caleb says. I know in Hard Knocks, he said he does not get nervous before games. I can guarantee you he's going to be at least a little bit nervous before this game. Every athlete, even the best ones, get nervous before games, especially their first one starting a game that actually matters at home in front of Soldier Field, in front of all the fans. Like he is going to be at least a little bit nervous. And to kind of counteract that, you can do a couple things. You can run the ball very, very well, run the ball early and often throughout this game. Don't get away from the run and have Caleb drop back 50 times because that is a recipe for disaster against a pretty good Titans D-line, especially with the rookie quarterback. So be, be sure to run the football well in this game. DeAndre Swift, if he gets a majority of carries, hopefully he has a pretty efficient outing. I also want to see movement from the quarterback. I want to see some bootlegs, some play action, some rollouts. Like he did a lot of this in the preseason. Uh, Shane Waldron did, so I'm not worried about him necessarily not doing it, but he just has to make sure that there is some type of movement at times in this game to give Caleb some half field reads some ability to make plays with his legs because there are going to be moments in this game where Caleb is going to be a little bit stumped and maybe wants to get outside a little bit to make things a little bit easier so that's key number one key number two then is going to be to play aggressive on defense against an inexperienced quarterback I want to see some blitzes I want to see pressure thrown Will Levis's way because he is still fairly young. He has an offensive line that has question marks on it. So if he can get a lot of pressure on the quarterback, that is always a recipe for success as a defense. And I want to see those DB blitzes. Like in the preseason, Kyla Gordon blitzed a bunch of times. Other defensive backs also came through on blitz attempts. I want to see that translate into the regular season because our guys were getting home very, very fast and having a lot of success on those blitzes. So you know, I want to see that pressure being thrown Will Levis's way. And then finally, key number three is going to be to get off the field on defense on third and long. It's a pretty obvious key. This can apply to any game, but especially in a game like this where you have a quarterback that can throw the deep ball, you got to be able to get off the field on third and long. The Bears have struggled with that mightily over the past couple seasons under Matt Eberflus. So I want to see improvements in that regard. And if the Bears want to win this game, they have to be able to get off on third and long. Now it's time for my score prediction. Who do I have winning this game? And guys, I have the Chicago Bears going into Soldier Field and Caleb Williams' first start ever in the NFL. Winning this game by a score of 21-17. to 17. I have it being pretty close because... As I mentioned throughout this video, the Titans are a pretty solid football team. Like, they have a lot of veteran talent now on both sides of the football. They have, you know, a quarterback in Will Levis that is a little bit boom or bust in my opinion. But he's definitely going to be making some big time plays in this game. And the Titans defense does scare me 
to some extent. So I don't have the Bears scoring a crazy amount of points in this game simply because, again, it's Caleb's first game. It's the offense's first game all playing together. So there are going to be kinks to work out in this offense. It's not going to be perfect right away. If the Bears only have like three points or seven points at halftime, I would not be totally surprised, again, because the Titans do have that veteran talent on defense and the ability to get pressure on the quarterback. But eventually... I do have the Bears coming out on top, partly because of how good I think our defense is going to be in this game. I am expecting at least a couple of turnovers forced on defense and, you know, strong performances against the run, too. I think that Tony Pollard is not going to get much of anything going in this game against the Bears' run defense that was pretty good last year. And if we can make the Titans one-dimensional, the Bears should be able to pull out this victory on top, even with Caleb, you know, not having to do not having to put up a crazy amount of points. But obviously, I hope I'm wrong about this. I hope the Bears score 30, 40 points. But I just don't think that's very realistic to expect in week one out of a rookie quarterback. As for my offensive MVP, I got to go with Cole Komet. The veteran Titan is going to be pretty important in this game in the middle of the field. I feel like especially for a rookie quarterback that's going to look for that safety valve at times, Cole Komet is going to be that safety valve. I think he gets... 75 receiving yards and a touchdown as well. I think he scores the first touchdown of the season for the Chicago Bears. As for my defensive MVP, I got to go with Tyreek Stevenson, the year two cornerback that I think is going to break out this season. I think he starts out on a strong note and gets the interception and a couple PBUs in this one working against Calvin Ridley. But leave your comments down below, guys. What do you guys think is going to happen in this game? I am so, so happy, so excited that Bears football is finally back because, again, this is my favorite time of year, and this should be one of the most exciting times to be a Bears fan. I just hope and pray that they win this damn game because this fan base has been waiting for a good Bears team for such a long, long time, and starting out on the right foot is going to be pretty important to prove to the fan base that this team could be one of those good Bears teams. So, Leave your comments down below, guys. I'll be back with the post-game reaction on Sunday afternoon. As always, bear down.